made it. It's finally here. So welcome back. We're going to get this put in and hopefully crank this thing up and be able to shift it to park and reverse and drive and it know what the heck's going on. So I'm going to crawl underneath there, plug it in the transmission, make sure it uh, works. It looks like it's pinned out right because um, there's 16 connectors on here or wires and that's how many are on the truck. So it looks like it's already like pre pre pinned and ready to go. We just got to solder them. All 16 of them, solder them up. So, but first I'm gonna make sure it plugs on the truck. It looks like a little different design. Uh, the one that goes into the truck right now is like a tight 90 degree into the truck, which is probably why it fails and comes all apart. Anyway, let's get crack a lacking. So, I was incorrect. That 90 is just a cap that goes over the plug. So, um, we should just be able to follow along with the colors and uh, just solder them in. So, I mean, it's just gonna be a time consuming process. Looking forward to it. Yeah. That's why I was, I was like, man, fuck, I, I was feeling bad, dude. Cause I was like, man, I know Ian's gonna be by himself. All right, we're gonna plug it in. See if it does what it's supposed to be doing. <clears throat> it's kind of a tricky little plug, but you see it's got like the two little... Yeah, definitely not supposed to route under here either. No, it goes over the cross member. Yeah. But just for... Uh... Testing purposes. Yeah. Plug her in just like that. Plug it in, all right. Let's see what we got. Let's see. I gotta go grab the keys. Grab the keys, man. Hey, officer. Oh. See, moment of truth, moment of truth. Yeah. Hmm. All day. Still, it's like it's not all the way plugged in. I'm sure, you got it all the way. Might not have it all the way plugged up in there. Well, see now it's now it's got me locked back out of like where I can't shift and everything. Something ain't right. Okay, so Drew's it right there. Looming up some wire. Uh, we're in the wrong spot of the transmission, but way up there by the plug, there's a shift cable. Well, there's a. Uh, Adjustment. Adjustment. Or, or it's really just what holds the shift cable in place. A proper work. And since it was disconnected or it's broken, probably from whenever they lifted the cab, they didn't take any of that stuff off the trans, which is why the, the plug was broken. They just, uh, I guess they forgot that the transmission is attached to the frame too. Um, so it broke where the cable is actually tied onto the frame. 
So it, once it pops out of that position, the cable essentially becomes longer and no longer actually pushes the selector pawl into park. So that's what our deal was then. It wasn't all the way in park. Um, so we uh, zip tied it back into the proper place. We'll see how long that lasts. If I have to get in, you have to get a whole new cable to replace that part. And I'm trying to avoid that. So if the old cable tie does the trick, we'll just leave it like that. Uh, it's not like structural or anything. It just keeps that cable from popping out of place. So uh, I think we should be good. So we're looming up this wiring harness and then we're gonna see what she does. She should crank right up, so. As long as the batteries are charged. Ah, trivial. So that's what we're doing right now. The old loomage. It's not fun. It's not a fun job. All right, guys. So what we got going on here is I am, this is the uh, USB that's on the aftermarket radio here. Um, what I'm going to do there is just hot glue you know, with one of these. Hot glue that into here. So that way it will plug in to the regular sink port. Um, just like you would expect. But if we ever need to take it out, we can just spray some... Uh, We'll just spray some contact cleaner on this the hot glue and that'll kind of melt it out and you can just pop it out so it's it's secure but not like a permanent uh, deal so we'll be able to service it so um that's what we're doing so it shouldn't take but a couple minutes and then we'll be uh, pretty much wrapped up as far as like the initial stuff like we can go take it for a drive and put some power steering fluid in it and um make sure it runs good and, and all that good stuff so see you guys in a bit so in the last video I showed you guys, or maybe it was the one before that, I don't know, in another video, I showed you guys where the cab was all torn out. Um, we're going to bolt the running boards up, but the mounting points were all screwed up. Uh, it was actually worse than we thought, because I thought it was just the two lower bolts uh, that were ripped out. Well, it was the whole, there's four bolts on the running boards. I should show you. So, you know, you got these two upper bolts and then these... So you got four per leg, so to speak, of the running boards, and you got three legs per side. Um, four out of the six on the truck were just like destroyed, and the upper ones are real bad. They're like they actually like torn through the cab sheet metal. So we're having to weld in some plates. I blew all the dust out, all the grime, at least as much as I could. They apparently sunk this thing pretty good in the in the mud at one point and that's probably what tore the uh running boards all up but anyway i digress so i've cleaned them all grind them all down brake cleaner them and started welding um and my buddy d or dom who's across the street from no drift he may come and weld some of the stuff that i can't because it is kind of tricky getting in there like i can weld decently on the bench you know welding tubing together whatever where you can like easily get to stuff but <clears throat> underneath there's a different story the metal's bent there's big gaps and he's a professional welder that's what he does um you know for the most part went to school for it so i'll show you his welds versus my welds and uh you'll, <laughs> you can see the difference but you know hey gotta learn somehow right so we're gonna do what we can and then the stuff that we can't do I think Dom's gonna come over tomorrow and kind of patch in the stuff that has got big gaps and stuff like that, you know, and I'll give him a hand doing whatever he needs. So, but yeah, so let's get into it. This is what I've done so far. See, I kind of blew a hole right there. So I have to come in and uh, fix that up. Right here didn't quite cover as well. But this is what I'm talking about, like these big gaps. I don't know if you guys can really see, but like those big gaps in here, I'm like struggling to fill those. So I may get these plates just kind of done as best as I can, and then have Dom come in, you know, and fill in these lower big giant gaps. <clears throat> so he kind of welded in this one yesterday. So you can see kind of the difference I mean, he had to put a ton of material right here. Same thing, just kind of fill it in. Uh, and he's gonna do the top one over here because that's got a big old gap, you know, when it shrank. So.
but we're probably going to end up having to put another piece here or weld it across because this is where the right here and this hole this is where the, the deal is going to mount So, got a little bit more cleanup to do on this side. I'm gonna put in another, probably just put in a whole big chunk right here. It's fun times, y'all. But, you know, this is where it mounts from the factory here, here, you know, then it'll be here and here. We'll weld all this in all together. So, same thing on this side. Oh, sorry, just hit your head on the uh, exhaust. You know, get all that cleaned up as much as we can around the edges where we're going to be welding in the plate. The fronts are okay. I don't know why those fronts up here ding, are not so bad. This one obviously, you know, all ripped out back here. So that's what we're working with today is uh, trying to patch all this stuff up so we can uh, put the running boards back on the truck because this thing is super tall. So here's a better view. Actually, let me turn this guy this way. That's a better view of the damage. You can see where it's supposed to bolt up right here. You supposed to have a bolt down here. All that's gone, it's all torn out. So we're gonna weld in a plate starting from up here all the way through and uh, close it up as best we can. And what I'm gonna do is just tack the plate into place because I'm running out of time to work on this thing today. Um, I'm gonna tack this one in place and that one in place. And then Dom will come in and uh, weld up the rest. So um, that's the plan. So we'll, get, we'll throw a few tacks on this guy and um, hopefully come back on Tuesday evening and see how Dom did. So Drew had a big gnarly flashlight, so I kind of wanted to show you guys from over here what we're talking about. So you see, like that is the, the factory hole. No way are we going to be able to get anything in there to mount that. And then, so, but then this, so you see those guys, those two uh, eight mils, they're actually slotted. So we'll be able to loosen, loosen those two bolts up and slide this whole L bracket down on the the step bar and then get that in place. And see, there's uh, Dom's well job. Uh, like I said, I just primed over it just so we wouldn't get any uh, rust or prevent as much as we could. See, we got one, one bolt, one measly bolt back there holding it in um, just to kind of get everything lined up. I'm going to go back there, snug it up, um, and then... We'll put a J clip in this side, and so at least we'll have it pretty much where it's going to be, where it's going to live on the truck. We'll drill our holes, then we'll uh, rib nut it in there, and then uh, mount it. So moving right along. All right, guys, we got our uh, rib nuts in. One, two, three. Going to use a factory J clip there. 
and one, two, factory J clip, J clip. So, I, I'm going to pop a little, another coat of uh, self etching primer on this guy, and then probably a coat of black. And then we're going to mount this bad boy up on this side. So let's do that. All right, guys. So <laughs> paint's not agreeing with each other, but it'll be all right. And some old black on there. So while while that's drying, I'm gonna go start on the other side, get that mocked up, get it drilled in, get it ready to go, so we can um, um, get finished before you know two in the morning. So yeah. All right, guys. Flip this light around. Now that one's done. This one's done. Had a drill bit walk right there, just wouldn't go in straight, so it is what it is. And then this one is a little bit angled, as you can see right there, but uh, I couldn't put this uh, body mount right here, couldn't really get the tool in there. So, anyway, even if we only get these three, we should be good. Um, that side's on. You can see all the bolts in that. I had one rivet nut that spun um, out of, what, four, five? Um, so not too bad. So ugh, I am uh, letting, oh, so dusty, dusty under there. I'm letting that paint dry real quick. This coat number two, two, three, I don't know, it's late. Um, letting that dry and um, then I'm going to bolt that one up. This one's on. I haven't tested it yet. I don't know if it's going to support my weight or not. We're going to find out. Uh, looks pretty level to me. Level enough. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get that one mounted and then we'll test them. Make sure they don't fall off when I stand on them. Ow. Ow. Okay, so I made a little oopsie and uh, I drilled those too low. So we only got two in this one and they were wonky. But I uh, got the, got them in there. I think we got all but one in this one. Yeah. And, you know, and it was going too fast for my own good. But uh, I'm pretty solid. I don't think she's going anywhere. Moment of truth. Let's see. It, uh, it didn't immediately fall off. So let's try the old driver's side. Seems strong enough. All right, guys. One last thing before we go, since we are doing a lot of the kind of finishing touches on the truck. This might be one of the last um, for a while that we mess with this thing. It's pretty much uh, it's good to go, other than like some really small stuff that I want to take care of. Um, but this is the last like big item. This guy right here. It's a, a foot of Ford emblem, 13 inches to be exact. So let's pop this guy on, shall we? Huh? 
Yeah, front end's complete. All right, guys, so cool. The, uh, I guess the body work of the truck is uh, done. I have one more mechanical thing we need to fix, which is the uh, parking brake cable that they cut. Don't know why, but it got cut at some point. Uh, I have the part that's supposed to fit the truck. Drew and I kind of messed around with it briefly one uh, evening. Uh, couldn't really get to it, uh, get it, so we just we had other stuff to do, so we kind of put it on the back burner um, because obviously it's not stopping us from kind of test driving the truck and doing all that stuff. So um, I'm probably going to drive this thing home, and I'll get with you guys in the morning, and we'll take a look at that uh, parking brake cable. So we will catch you then. All right, guys, so I know I said it would be the next day, but it's actually the day after that because uh, we got caught up working on a trailer, never got back to the truck. And Drew and I just knocked out the uh, e-brake cable and didn't film nothing, not, a, not even a little bit. So I'm just gonna pop under here and kind of show you guys uh, what was broken and what we had to do to fix it. Oh, my light. My light. So, let me see if I can get some light on the situation. See up there where the cable goes through that frame mount? They cut the cable basically right here and then pulled the cable out of the frame mount, just yanked it out. Um, probably when they lifted up the cab. So the tabs are bent on that little mount. We had to rebend them back. I had to get a new intermediate cable, which is this long cable that goes all the way back to see that purple tag right there. And then we got another cable that you see right by the leaf spring shackle goes into the actual drum brakes. Um, and that is what pulls the parking brake cable. So Drew and I had to replace the back cable which you can't really see it's tucked in that wheel back there and uh this intermediate one and it really wasn't wasn't too bad i was actually uh we fought with it for a little while a few a few days ago it didn't really make any progress i think we were just tired but uh once we kind of sat down and looked at how it mounted it wasn't so bad so yeah the truck is uh running and drivable as you would uh, purchase it from the factory now. So, sweet. for the first well your first rip in the old six seven i've driven around a little bit um it ain't bad it's got a ton of torque obviously um and it gets a decent gas mileage fuel mileage whatever you call it um since technically we're not running on gas but um when it's not in region, which it does, I don't know, every tank or so, I guess it does a region. It's like 10 miles of the gallon when it does a region. It's atrocious. But uh, when it's not, it averages, I can get it to about, like, I drive kind of like, I guess it's like a, whatever, you know, um, like a mix of city and highway and it averages about 17 miles of the gallon um until you start towing something i towed a trailer the other day with it and uh it gets down to like 16 empty but you know you don't buy these things for the fuel mileage but uh it's not too bad i mean there's there might be a wheel bearing making a little bit of grumbly noises here and there 
because I feel it in the floorboard more, more than I hear it, really. Um, and then the only thing I really hear every once in a while is if you have the window down and that, remember that rib nut that spun? Still got the bolt in there and uh, it kind of jangles around. So got to deal with that, but you know, minor stuff. But yeah, something kind of feels a little weird in the floorboard, but other than that, it uh, runs good. I'll uh, kind of take you for a little, uh, once we get on the highway, show you the the old acceleration from the, the six seven so that was a little half throttle pull um, from what I don't know 20 to 70 don't want to go too crazy it's really not warmed up all the way yet so um, but it does all right for a 9,000 pound truck um, I got a little wind noise from right up here I don't know if you guys will even really be able to tell but other than that I mean it's pretty quiet in here suspensions stiff like you'd expect from a big massive truck but Hard than that. It's pretty comfy in here. Heated seats, cold seats, all the things that you want. So, but until any other decent projects, I mean, this is pretty much it. She's pretty much good to go. Um, so we've successfully turned this into a uh, you know a decent truck from one that was uh, mismatched colors and destroyed interior and everything else I mean, it's, a, it's a daily you can easily drive this around pretty comfy every day and tow whatever you want I mean so is it as comfy as the F-150? no but it will also tow an additional like 8,000 pounds so everything in life is a compromise but anyway guys I hope you enjoy the video and uh, like kind of the series of the truck coming together. Um, I'm sure there'll be other little knickknack projects that we'll film and stuff on it. Um, but until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If not, thumb it down. If you liked it well enough, consider hitting that subscribe button. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.